I'm a, 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 or was, or kind of am a toy designer. Um, and uh, before I was a toy designer, oh, I was a, a mime, a uh, street mime, actually. Um, and then I was a, an entertainer, I guess. And before that, I was a silversmith. And before that, I was, I was out of the house at about 15 and a half, and I never wound up going to college. I didn't really... I didn't see the point at the, at the time, I do now, after learning about all the quantum stuff. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to show you um, a little bit about the world of toy design, at least from my small aperture of the world. This is a, this is a video I made when I first started uh, doing toy design. I, I'm in my garage making weird stuff, and then you go to these toy companies, and there's some uh, guy across the table, and, and he goes, pass, pass, pass. You know, you think it's so cool, but they... Anyway, I made this little tape that I'd always show when I go in. This is the name of my um, company, Giving Toys. So uh, I used to work at Mattel, actually, um, and after I left Mattel, I started doing uh, uh, all these hamburger makers, and, and they got the license to do makers, and so this is a hamburger maker that you, you take peanut butter and stuff, and you put it in there, and, and it makes, uh, and this is a french fry maker, a little tiny food you can eat. Um, I beat up a pasta maker to make that. Then uh, this is a McNugget maker, I think. Uh, this now that's a McNugget maker, and this is a this is my uh, oldest daughter um, making a uh, McApple pie. So you, you can make pie and cinnamon and sugar, and then you eat and you eat and you eat. And you eat. She's about 300 pounds now. She's, no, she's not. She's beautiful. This is how they looked when they came out at the end. These are a. Uh, this is like a $15 million line, and it got me through some, uh, I only, I didn't make any royalties on this, but it got me through. Next is a compilation of a bunch of stuff. That was a missile foam launcher that didn't get sold. This is a squishy head for no apparent reason. This, this is uh, some effects that uh, I did for Wake, Rattle, and Roll. It was a robot eye thing you see me controlling in the back. I paid the rent for about a month. This is a walking Barbie. I said, oh, this is it. And they go, well, that's really nice. And out it goes. So this is uh, some fighting robots. I thought everyone would want these. They fight. They, they can get back up. You know, wouldn't this be cool? And they and they made it into a toy, and then they dropped it like a hot rock. But they're pretty cool. They're, uh, this is uh, we're doing some toy testing on my little pug, seeing if this can really grab. It does pretty good. I'm using little phone connectors to make them so they can spin. There's, that's how Daisy I have those album things my kids don't know what they are this is a clay maker you know i said i, I went to i went to you know plato and said look i can animate this and said, don't talk to us about plato and then i made a lego animator i thought this would be so great and and you know lego don't take legos to lego that's the answer there. They, they, they know everything about it then i started doing animatronics right i love dinosaurs i used to be in the film business kind of and actually nicholas negroponte saw this when i was like 12 and anyway so they said no you have to make two and they have to fight you know, because how? Why would kid want a dinosaur? And this is a, a this is me using solid or, or 3D Studio back in the 80s. And this there is what? Okay, this well, is that's Caleb David John. Letterman. You can see how Demetrius. old this Caleb. stuff is. That's my younger singer cousin. Navigation. All right. Now this, this is, is a, a segment called Dangerous uh, Toys You Won't See at Christmas. Yes, it is. We had my yeah, first saw blade launcher, and we had uh, a <laughs> flamethrower chair. I, my career basically peaked here. And in the back are foam core cutouts of the people that couldn't make it to the show. Okay, so please just, just, just drive up a little bit. So this is uh, MEK going through a windshield wiper motor. So this, this is a, a, I used to kind of be an actor. I'm, I'm really not very good at it. But the, uh, this is a guy named Dr. Yachts who would take toys apart and, and show kids about engineering. And you can see the, the massively parallel processing Nintendos there. And over to the left is the Viewmaster of the CD-ROM. A guy named Stan Resnikoff did this as a pilot. And this is a, you can see the little window there. And you can actually see the steady cam with the bubble on the bottom. Don't look at that part. All right, I'm flying. See the keyboard strapped for my wrist? Way, way ahead of my time. Right oh, no. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, take it easy. Hey, take it easy. This is off. This is off. The batteries are gone. Stop. I'm getting dizzy. Stop. Wait, hey, yo, yo, hey. Ah, I love toys. That's all I wanted to say there. I love toys. Okay, so, so that was uh, that's that was the first um, kind of uh, 
That was the first batch of products. Uh, uh, most of them did not go. You know, get one out of 20, one out of 30 products. And every now and then we'd do something like a, a, you know, a, um, an automated hair wrap machine you know, that tangles your hair and pulls your scalp out. And, and we'd make some money on that, you know, and we'd, we'd give it around. But uh, eventually um, uh, we, we left LA and uh, we moved to uh, Idaho and where there's actually a lot of peace and quiet. And, and I started working on this project. Oh, I have to tell you about this real quick. Throughout this whole thing, Making toys, um, I think there's a, a real correlation with innovation in art and science. There's some kind of a blend that happens that allows uh, you, know, to, you, you to find innovation. And I try to sum this up in some kind of symbol that, that means something to me anyway. And so art and science held in kind of a dynamic balance. That's where I think innovation happens. And actually, this is, to me, how I can come up with great ideas, but it's not how you actually get leverage. Actually, you have to put a circle around that and call that business, and those three together, I think, give you leverage in the world, but moving on. So um, this is a quick tale I'm gonna tell. I, this is the Furby tale. Um, as he said, I, I was co-inventor of the Furby. I did the body and the creature, well, you'll see. So th by way of showing you this, you can kind of get an understanding of, of um, what it is to hopefully try to create um, robotic life forms or technology that, that has an emotional connection with the user. So this is my family. Um, this is uh, my wife, Christy, and Abby, and, and uh, Melissa, and my 17-year-old now, Emily, who, who was just a pack of trouble. All right, there's, uh, there's that robot again. Um, I came out of the movie business, as I said, and I said, let's make these uh, animatronic robots. Let's, let's make these things. And uh, so I've always had a big interest in this. This one actually didn't go anywhere, but uh, I got my feet wet doing this, and this is a smaller one, and I have a little moving torso in there. Little tiny guy walks along. More servo drives, lots of servo hacking, lots of mechanical stuff. There's another one, actually has um, Skeletor legs, I think he's wearing there. And then, oh, this is a little pony, little pony, very cute little thing. The point of showing these is I've always been interested in, in, in little artificial life pieces. Um, so the challenge was uh, I worked for Microsoft for a little bit, uh, working on the Microsoft Barney, and this is a, you know, the, the purple uh, dinosaur with, with kind of bloatware. And, um, you know, they had lots, <laughs> it just, lots of stuff in there that you didn't need, I thought. And then Microsoft can just fill up you know, a warehouse full of this stuff and see if they sell. So it's a really strange business model compared to from coming from a toy company. But anyway, uh, a friend of mine uh, and I, uh, Dave Hampton, decided to see if we could do like a single cell organism. What's the, what's the fewest pieces we could use to make a little life form? And that's a little 30 cent Mabuchi motor. And so uh, I have all these uh, design books, like I'm sure many of you have. And, and throughout the books, this is the first page on Furby, um, I have kind of the art and science. I have the, the the why over here and the how over there. I try to do a lot of philosophy, a lot of thinking about all these projects because they're not just bing ideas. You have to really dig deep in these things. So there's some real pseudocode over here and getting the idea of different kind of drives, things like that. And, and originally, Furby only had two eyes and some batteries on the bottom. And then we said, well, you're going to feed him. And then he needs to talk. And, and it got more complicated. And then I had to figure out how I'm going to use that one motor to make the eyes move and the ears move and the body to move and the mouth to move and, you know, and to make it blink and, and do all that at the same time. Well, I came up with this kind of uh, linear uh, expression thing with these cams and feedback. And that worked pretty well. Then I started to get a little more realistic. And I have to start drawing this stuff. And, and there's my note to self at the top, lots of engineering. So <laughs> that turned out to be a little more than true. There's my first exploded view and all the little pieces and the little worm drive and all that stuff. And then uh, I gotta start building it. So this is the real thing. I get out, start cutting my finger and, and gluing things together and that's my little workshop. And there's the first little cam that drove Furby. And there's a Furby on the half shell. You can see the little, <laughs> little BB in the box is my tilt sensor. I, I just basically gnawed all this stuff out of, out of plastic. So uh, there's the back of his head, with a billion holes in it, and there I am, I'm done. There's my little Furby. No, it's, uh, it's a little uh, robot on, on heroin or something, I think. So uh, right now, you see, I'm a, I love little robots, and my wife says, uh, well, you may like it, but nobody else will. So she comes to the rescue. This is my wife, Christy, who's just, you know, my muse and my partner for eternity here. And she does drawings, right? She's, she's an actual, you know, artist, and she starts doing all these different drawings and does, uh, uh, you know, color patterns and coloring books. And I like the guy with the cigar at the bottom there. I thought, <laughs> didn't test so well, but I, I like him. And then uh, she started doing these uh, other images. At that time, Beanie Babies was a big hit. And we thought, well, we'll do a bunch of different ones. So here's a little pink one, a little poof on his head. And here's, this didn't do so well in testing either. I don't, I don't know why. There's my favorite, Demon Furby. That was a, that was a good one. Anyway, finally settle on kind of this kind of a look, little poofy body, a little imaginary character. And there he is, a little bush baby on, on caught in the headlights there. I actually went to Toys R Us, got a little furry cat, ripped it apart and made this. 
And since then, every time I come home from Toys R Us with, with dolls or something, they, they disappear from my desk and they get hidden in the house. I'm, I, they, I have three girls and they just, they, 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 it's like a rescue animal thing there going there. <laughs> so a little tether coming off is just a control for, the, for, the, for his mouth and his eyes. It's just a little servo controller. And I made a video going, hey, my name's Furby, aren't I good? You know, and then I'd reach my hand. He, he t- he t- you can tickle him. And I put my hand, ha, 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 ha. And, that, and that's how we sold him. Um, and, and Hasbro actually said, uh, I'm actually, uh, Tiger Electronics at the time, said, uh, yeah, we want to do this. We have, you know, 13 weeks or something to Toy Fair, and, and, and we're going to hire you guys to do this. And so uh, Dave and I got working, mostly me, because it was all mechanics at this point. So now I have to really figure out all kinds of stuff I don't know how to do. And I, I started working with SolidWorks and a whole other group to do that. And we started, this is way back where, before there was really much SLA going on, not a lot of rapid prototyping. We certainly didn't have the money to do this. They only paid me like a little bit of money to do this, so I had to call a friend of a friend who, ha- who was running the GM prototype plant, SLA plant, that was down. And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll run them. So they ran all the shells for us, which was nice of them. And the cams I got cut at uh, Hewlett Packard, we snuck in on the weekend. And so we just had a disk of, of the files, but they, they have a closed system, so you couldn't print the things out on the machine. So we actually printed them out on, on, on clear and taped them on the monitors, and on the weekend we... We ran the parts for that. So this is how they came out close to the end, and then uh, they looked like little Garfields there. Eight months later, you may remember this, uh, this was uh, total, total, total chaos. For a while, they were making two million Furbies a month. They actually wound up doing about 40 million Furbies. I, I, it's unbelievable how, I don't know how that can be. And uh, Hasbro made about, you know, billion and a half dollars, and I make a little bit on each one. So. <laughs> So, uh, full circle, why do I do this? Why, why do you, you know, try to do this stuff? And it's, of course, for your kids. And there's my uh, youngest daughter with, with her Furbies, and she still actually has those. So, I'm kind of retired, and we're already living in paradise up, up in Boise on a river, you know. So, um, and then uh, I started another company called Toy Innovation, and we did uh, some projects with uh, Mattel, um, with a, actually with a lady who's here, Ivy Ross. And we did Miracles Moves Baby, made it in Wired Magazine, did a bunch of other stuff. And then uh, started another company. We did a little uh, handheld uh, device for, for teens that could hook up the internet, won Best of Innovations at uh, CES, but, but really I kind of slowed down and said, okay, I, I just, after a while I, I had this old tape of this dinosaur and I gave it to this guy and this other guy saw it and, and then, then people started to want to do it and, and they said they'd spend all this time, so I said, okay, let's, let's try to do this dinosaur project. The crazy idea is we're going to try to clone a dinosaur as much as we can with today's technology, and it's not really, but as close as we can do, and, and, and we're going to try to really pull this off, um, intentfully try to make something that seems like it's alive. Not a robot that kind of does, but let's really go for it. So I picked a Camarasaurus because the Camarasaurus was the most abundant of the, of the sauropods in North America, and you could actually find full fossil evidence of these. That's a juvenile. And, and so we actually went in. There's a book called Walking on Eggshells, where they found actual uh, sauropod skin in Patagonia. And the picture from the book, so when I, I, I told the sculptor, to use, use this bump pattern, whatever you can, to, to copy that. Very, very obsessive. There's a kind of truncated Camarasaurus skeleton, but the geometry is correct. And then I went in and measured all the geometry, because I figured, hey, biomimicry, if I do it kind of right, it might move kind of like the real thing. So uh, there's the motor. And, so, and about this time, you know, all these other people are starting to help. Here's an example of what we did with the skull. There's the skull. Um, there's my drawing of a skull, there's kind of the skin version of the soft tissue, there's the mechanism that would go in there, kind of a Geneva drive, there's some SolidWorks versions of it, here's some SLA parts of the same thing, and then uh, these are really crude pieces, we were just doing some tests here. There's the skull, pretty much the same shape as, as the Camarasaurus, there's a, uh, a photorealistic eye behind a lens, and there's uh, kind of the first uh, exploded view or, or see-through view. There's the uh, first SLA version, and it already kind of has the feel, it has kind of a cuteness already. And the thing about blending science and art and this multidisciplinary stuff is you can do a robot, then you go, go, go back and do the, the shape, and then you go back and forth. The servos and the front legs, we had to shape those like muscles. They had to fit within the envelope. There was, it was a, a tremendous amount of, of work to get all that working right. All the neck and the tail are cables, so it moves smoothly and organically. And then, of course, you're not done yet. You have to get the uh, look for the skin. The skin's a whole other thing, probably the hardest part. So you hire artists, and, and you try to get the look and feel of the character. Now, this, now we're character designers, right? And, and we're still trying to keep with, with, the, with the real character. So now you go back and you cover the whole thing with clay. Now you start doing uh, the sculpture for this. And you can see that we got a guy from, who's just a, a fanatic about uh, dinosaurs to do the sculpting for us, down to the spoon-shaped teeth and everything, and then more sculpting, and then more sculpting, and then more sculpting, and then more sculpting. And then four years and uh, $10 million later, we have uh, our little Pleo. John, you want to bring him up? 
Uh, John Sissoka is our CTO and is really the man that's done most of the work with our like 40 person company. I'd like to give John a hand. He never gets recognition. This is John Sissoka. So uh, thank you, John. Thank you and get it's back fun. to work, all right, man? All right, all right. so. <laughs> No, it's, no, it's, it's very painful. So, uh, the, the, these, are, these, are, these are little plios, and you, you can probably see them. This, this I, on purpose, um, they, they go through life stages. So when you first get them, they're, they're babies, and the more you have them, kind of the older they get, and they kind of learn through their behavior. So this one, this one's actually asleep, and, and hang on. Plio, wake up. Plio, come on. So this guy's listening to my voice here, but they have uh, 40 sensors uh, all over their body. They have uh, seven processors. They have um, 14 motors. They have, uh, and, but you don't care, do you? They're just cute, right? That's the idea. That's the idea. We're, so they, see, hey, come on. Hey, do you feel that? What, there's something big and loud over here. Hey. That's good. Wake up, wake up, wake up. They're, yeah, they're like kids, you know. You, yeah. Yeah, okay, he's hungry. I'll show you what he's been doing for, for four years. Here, here, here. Have some money, Pleo. There you go. Please. That's what, that's what the investors think. That is just... Right, right. So, so they, 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 they're really sweet little guys, and um, we're hoping that, um, you know, our belief is that, that humans need to feel empathy towards towards things in order to be more human, and we think we can uh, help that out by having little creatures that you can love. Now, these are not robots, they're kind of love bots, you know, they, they do change over time, but mostly they evoke um, a feeling of caring. And we have, uh, yeah, all right, I have a, uh, a little something here. Now, I, I do want to say that, you know, Ugobi is, is not there yet, we've just opened the door, and, and it's for all of you to step through it. We, we did include some things that are hopefully useful. Excuse me, Pleo. They, he has a USB and he has an SD card, so it's completely open architecture. So anyone can plug him. Thank you. <laughs> this is John over here. Anyone can take Pleo and they can totally redo his personality. You can make him bipolar or someone said a... <laughs> yes, you, can, you can change his, um, his uh, homeostatic drives or whatever you want to call them. Uh, kids can just drag and drop, put in new sounds. We actually... Uh, it's very hard to keep um, people from doing this. We have one animator who's, who's taken it and, um, and it's done a, a, a take on the Budweiser beer commercial and they're going, what's up? You know, so it's, <laughs> yes, he likes that. <laughs> so they're, they're a handful. We hope you get one. Um, I, I don't know what I'm missing uh, to say, but as a last thing I'd like to say is that if we continue along this path, we are designing our children's best friends. And there's a lot of social responsibility in that. That's why Pleo is soft and gentle and loving. And so uh, I just, I hope we all dream well. Thank you.